Good evening and thanks for joining us on your Friday night. I'm Sophie Erber. Texas Governor Greg Abbott tonight is taking matters into his own hands, vowing that Texas will go ahead and build a border wall with Mexico. This despite President Joe Biden's executive order in January that was canceling all border wall construction. KCAU 9's Washington correspondent Anna Warnicke reports from our top story at 5. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says Texas is building a border wall and he says Texas is paying for it. I will announce next week the plan for the state of Texas to begin building the border wall in the state of Texas. Governor Abbott says he's allocated $1 billion in state funds to uphold border security. And he says part of that money will go towards resuming construction of the wall between Texas and Mexico, started by former President Donald Trump. This is a direct result of the, of the President Biden's policy when he reversed President Trump's policies. Kansas Republican Senator Roger Marshall says he supports the idea. It's so bad down there that the Texas governor is going, to, is going to take something that should be the responsibility of the United States and pay for it himself. But Texas Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar says he's against Abbott's proposed border wall, calling it, quote, a waste of hard-earned tax dollars that does not solve the problems we currently see at the southern border border. And the League of United Latin American Citizens, or LULAC, says the governor doesn't have the authority to order a wall in Texas. They plan to file a lawsuit saying this is a huge waste of taxpayer money and very likely illegal. Governor Abbott says more details of his plan will be released next week. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicke, KCAU 9 News. The Winnebago tried tonight is applauding the termination of the Keystone XL pipeline. Chairwoman Victoria Kitchian says, quote, this is a victory for not only Indian country, but for all Turtle Island. Additionally, protection of the Missouri River, the Oglala Aquifer, and all Mother Earth relatives for which water is life, end quote. Now, the tribe has opposed the project for many years, hoping to protect their land from potential environmental risks. South Dakota Governor, Senator, excuse me, Mike Rounds tonight taking a different perspective. The Republican calling the termination of that pipeline a huge mistake. Rounds said in a statement, the U.S. will be hurt economically and environmentally for years to come. Quote, now instead of using an efficient and environmentally friendly pipeline to transport petroleum, petroleum will be transported by road and rail, which is more dangerous, end quote. More than 350,000 people face famine tonight in Ethiopia, the United Nations says. The Associated Press got some rare access to farming areas in Tigray, where farmers, aid workers, and local officials tonight have confirmed that food had been turned into a weapon of war there. Ethiopian and Eritrean soldiers are blocking food aid and even stealing it. They said the soldiers especially, the Eritreans, are also accused of killing livestock and stopping the farmers there from harvesting or plowing. More than 2 million of Tigray's 6 million people have already fled, and those who stay often cannot plant new crops or till their land because they fear for their lives. Meanwhile, here in Siouxland, Highway 71 has reopened in Spirit Lake. This after a large fire caused a section of it to be closed this morning. The impacted road is from 34th Street to just past 36th Street. Authorities there say southbound traffic on the highway is reduced to one lane currently. Drivers are asked to watch for emergency vehicles. The Nebraska State Patrol tonight has identified four people killed in a head-on crash as a family from Fremont. It happened Thursday morning near Scribner on Highway 275. That's when a sedan and a semi-trailer collided. Investigators say the driver of that car, 37-year-old Heidi Likens Huseman, her husband, 29-year-old Joshua Huseman, and 10-year-old Jasmine Likens were all pronounced dead at the scene. The couple's nine-month-old baby died a short time later at a Fremont area hospital. The semi-driver was not injured in that crash. With pandemic restrictions easing now, life in Siouxland is starting to look a lot more like it used to. That is before the pandemic. Masks and social distancing seem like a thing of the past in most public places locally, and there's an array of summer events available for Siouxlanders to enjoy. The Sioux City Public Museum is set to host events for the first time in nearly two years. While the Hard Rock has brought back live concerts at Anthem, all signs that life is going back to, quote, an old normal. The biggest thing for us is I think it's been almost 500 days since we've had live entertainment here. We were able to start last Friday with one show with the Pork Tornadoes, which was great. 
And coming up tonight at 6, KCAU 9 News reporter Jason Taktagian looks at what's changing exactly and how Siolanders feel about returning to life after the pandemic. And for another year in a row, dozens of Siolanders came out to the Leeds Barbershop to go bald. The barbershop has hosted the St. Baldrick's Day event for nearly 13 years. That event usually takes place on St. Patrick's Day, which is why you might be seeing some traditional Irish garb and lots of green. It is an event where people shave their heads to raise money and awareness for childhood cancer. More than 20 people took part today. Others participating by chopping off their locks and donating it, or even trimming their cut into a semi-shaved mohawk. If you missed the event and still want to donate to the cause, you can visit our website right now at SiouxLandProud.com, and we do have some more information on how to do so. And it's time tonight for your first check on the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson is standing by. And Scott, weather and other headlines today because as you can see there on the radar behind us, rain for the first time in more than a week. Yeah, and first time in a dozen days. It's wow. really been quite a while. And some of those storms as they pulled through the area were very strong with wind gusts near 70 miles per hour. You can see that those traveled through between 4 o'clock in the morning and about the midday hours before those passed off to the southeast. We've now had a return of the sunshine. It felt pretty comfortable outside today somewhat humid as those storms passed, but we are starting to see some drier air work in with high temperatures generally between 80 and 85. Tonight, comfortable enough to open up the windows for a change as it looks like temperatures will slip into the 50s. It will become hotter soon, though, and we'll have more information on that and when we might see some more rain coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie? Thanks, Scott. If you love theater, the Sioux City Railroad Museum announced the beginning of its series, Storytelling Saturdays. It wouldn't be possible without help from donors like the Gilchrist Foundation and the Iowa Arts Council. In total, roughly six and a half million dollars went toward those projects like Storytelling Saturdays and the historical preservation of the museum. The program will feature character actors costumed in railroad attire, you can see right there, telling 10-minute monologues while interacting with the museum visitors in character. You'll hear from one of those actors taking part in the series. That's coming up tonight right here at 6. The U.S. government's Highway Safety Agency tonight has approved a request by General Motors to recall four 2021 vehicle makes due to a malfunctioning airbag warning light. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration identified these cars in question, including the Buick Envision, the Cadillac CT4 and CT5, the Cadillac Escalade and Escalade ESV, Chevy Corvette, Suburban and Tahoe, and the GMC Yukon and GMC Yukon XL. Now, the government says more than 285,000 vehicles are affected by the software-related issue, which could cause the airbag light to illuminate inconsistently and then fail to notify the driver of an actual problem. Consumer prices are surging for many things tonight. It's the biggest year-over-year -year jump in prices since the Great Recession, leaving shoppers looking for new ways to save on everything, from groceries to travel, even clothing. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis explains. This is what happens when the consumer comes out of hibernation. Everybody wants to spend money who has money to spend. Meantime, there are supply shortages as a result of the pandemic. That has resulted in prices overall for consumers jumping 5% in May since a year ago. That's the biggest jump in prices since the Great Recession. And we're really seeing it across the board. Beef prices, for example, up 2.3%. The price of clothing up 5.6%. Airfares, everybody suddenly wants to travel this summer. Airfare and ticket prices up 24%. And you look at hotels and motels, they're feeling it too, up 9% on prices there. Gasoline, this is another one. We were barely using gasoline a year ago in lockdown. Now, as we've reopened, we're using more of it, and the price is up 56%. But one of the areas where we've really seen a big increase in prices, and a big reason why we're seeing this overall giant increase in inflation, is because of used car prices. Used car prices over the last year are up 30%, meaning if you bought a used car a year ago for $10,000, you might be able to sell that used car for $13,000 today. That's highly unusual. Now, economists, top economists, are divided on where we go from here. The Fed chair and others believe that this is temporary, that prices by the end of this year should normalize, whereas others see this as something longer term. Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. 
unknown number, no caller ID, or spam likely. Those are just some of the words now flashing across many people's phones all too often. And on Welcome, tips to make it all stop coming up. And it looks like it's going to be slightly cooler this weekend. In fact, you'll be able to give the utilities a break tonight as it looks like temperatures will fall comfortably into the 50s. But 90s do make a comeback soon as a dry pattern settles in once more. Your 9 on 9 forecast coming up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. If you have a phone, it's no secret. Many of us are constantly dealing with robocalls every day. And while there's no real way to stop them completely, experts at Consumer Reports say there are some steps we can take to reduce the number of unwanted calls. ABC's Rena Roy has the story. Day in and day out, millions of Americans getting bothersome calls like these. We just suspend your social security number. For many, it seems their phones are constantly ringing off the hook. The robocallers are doing everything they can to stay a step ahead of the game. It does get out of hand for a lot of people. While they won't ever go away for good, experts say there are simple steps you can take to cut down those calls, including activating the whitelist mode, a feature found on most smartphones. You can go to your settings and only allow those calls whose numbers are in your phone book to come through. The downside is that if you have an important call, they're going to get sent to your voicemail for the most part. Another option is contacting your cell phone carrier. Most have a variety of security settings available, like the Stir Shaken technology that helps recognize and label spam numbers. Some of them are free. Some of them cost ex extra money. But those phone features will give you a little bit more flexibility to decide maybe what kind of calls you want to let through. You can also download a number of third-party apps like Umail or Nomo Robo if you're comfortable with them accessing your data and information. And of course, experts say never pay money to or share your information with these anonymous callers. Instead, you can report the number on your phone or online at the Federal Trade Commission's website. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, she's the winningest scholarship seeker in America. And find out how many college offers this high school graduate already got and where she's taking her higher education to next. When it comes to scholarships, college-bound students have a variety of options. And while some are happy to receive a few thousand dollars, Bill Wood introduces us to the girl who received more than any other U.S. high school student. At International High School of New Orleans, everybody's gone home for the summer. Edward Waters College? Never heard of this one before. Except one member of the class of 2021. Mississippi State. She's still got work to do. We have Coe College. 18-year-old Jada Brown. Georgetown. She's sorting through letters. We have University of Louisiana Monroe. Shuffling through her stuff. Niagara University. Where is this at? Sent from colleges and universities from across the country. Barry University. Schools who hope Jada will just say Yes. You got accepted into how many colleges and universities? 141 colleges and universities. I didn't know there were that many. I did either, but I'm very happy, blessed, thankful. I was a little overwhelmed, but now I'm good. Carlo University. Even bigger and better is how much scholarship people. money schools offer. Oh, this is nice. Jada got more than $5 million, more than any college bound kid in the USA. You are. The five million dollar girl. Yes, I am the five million dollar girl. A lot of attention is on me. I'm in the spotlight, but this is a great thing. So, uh, yeah. Could you loan me enough to get a Diet Coke out of the vending machine? How, how long you have? How much you need? With more money than most people make in a lifetime, Jada just made the decision of her lifetime. She's decided she's headed to LSU to become Dr. Jada Brown. Go Tigers! A dentist. Open wide. Congratulations. Taking a live look outside right now. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. First, this live look outside on a sunny night. Before we wrap up at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim.
Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. Iowa status is first in the nation, looks to be in jeopardy coming up in 2024. A bold move by Nevada's governor today. We'll tell you what that is coming up at 6 o'clock. Also, just a half an hour away, despite morning rain, a long-running Siouxland Christian Music Festival is opening a two-day run near Sheldon. KCAU 9 reporter Hannah Adamson talks live with music fans at the Rise Music Festival, sharing what they think about being back at a big concert. That's coming up at 6. And the end of the school year can't come fast enough for some students still in class. But before they step off a bus in Ohio, one school bus driver is receiving a special send-off for the summer. We'll share how students said thank you to him coming up after World News Tonight. And Jake's with us at 6 as well. A preview of this weekend's Bandits game. They're back in town for football. All right. Very cool. Thanks so much. Looking forward to that. And I'm sure they're looking forward to the fact that the rain, for the most part, seems like it's moved out from Siouxland tonight, Scott. Yeah, the rain's over with, and it's also a little cooler, so we can appreciate that with a low of 56 degrees tonight and a high temperature of 88 for tomorrow. It will become hotter next week as we get back into the 90s, and it looks like we'll dry things out once again. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 6. Until then, have a great night, everyone.